Hey, Russell, Balance Circuit here, back with a beat breakdown of the beat we did a little while back before I went to Iceland. Yes, saw the volcano. Very cool. As you'll remember, we did all seven inch records on this sampling session. So we had some jazz narrated by Jack Webb, we had some math rock, we had some post rock, we had another singing nun. Um, this one, Sister Mary Mead. So let's take a look and see how I put everything together. As always, there will be a link to the full beat in the description. That will be on SoundCloud. So please, you know, do all the YouTube stuff. Comment, like, subscribe, share, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so the major elements of this track are three bass and drum grooves. The first one sounds like this. Second one sounds like this. And the third one sounds like this. That one came from the uh, Singing Nun record, I believe. So, um, what I did with all three of these things is I augmented them with beats that I played in on my controller. Um, if we take a look at the drum rack here, I'm just using stock Ableton sounds. Um, this one is called uh, Kick 70s, uh, Snare 70s MPC, Hi-Hat Close, and Hi-Hat Open. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I played these beats on pads along with the sample and kind of left as much of the swing or shitty timing, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, as I could so it would still sound good. So if you actually look at this MIDI file, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff that is not on the grid at all. And if you listen to it by itself, you'll kind of hear that shitty timing I guess so for example so you can hear that that kick is really late there but if you listen to it with the sample it makes sense so just trying not to move stuff around, time correct the sample too much, and then make what I play to augment it um, more fitting. So the drum beat that you get with that second drum and bass groove sounds like this. really trying to work with the sample and play stuff that makes sense with it and that augments it but that still uses the beat that's already there. Uh, so let's see, the third example would be this one. I 
basically tried to keep as much of the performance as possible, but there was a lot of moving stuff around to kind of try to make it sit in the pocket a little better. I have this chord hit down here. And it's pitched up quite a bit. So like the original sample was this. It was like the crash at the ending of a song where you just hold the chord out. So once it's pitched up, you get this 11 semitones. Anyway, that's used sort of throughout as just punctuations. Other melodic elements are, are the saxophone. Um, well, saxophone and piano, I guess, that came off of the Jazz 45 narrated by Jack Webb. Shout out to Dragnet. Then we have a horns section that came off of that same uh, math rock record that we got that first bass groove from. And it sounds like they had two trumpet players, maybe one doing double tracking, but they're, they're panned left and right. I chopped out two different sections of that passage and then kind of layered them over each other at different points. And you get this. Obviously the bass groove is still there as well. So then the second one comes in so they're overlapping a little bit first one fades out the next one comes in and eventually we fade that one out the original one comes back in and then we have both of them together for uh, essentially then four trumpet players playing all together hard pan pretty cool effect so you'll see here that I've lined up these loops uh, so that they're hitting at the same time later on towards the end of the song I offset them so you get some even sort of more interesting phrasing So that were, there was a lot of experimentation about sort of moving things around to see where those uh, layered parts came up with interesting phrases. So the other melodic element is this um, very small vocal chops that I took off of the uh, indelicately named China Night record, uh, which is Japanese melody. So, like in the 50s, they didn't understand the difference between China and Japan. I don't know. It's just, again, very disconcerting, <laughs> but cool samples. So, these are very small vocal snippets that I chopped into uh, bits and arranged. <laughs> with lots o crackle so those are just sprinkled in there um i kind of arranged things to make it complement the saxophone so if we put both of those in together you'll hear Pretty 
pretty sure I must have had to pitch these, yeah. These are all pitched down by two semitones uh, in order to match uh, with the saxophone. So we also had this backwards guitar, which was basically... Uh, Shout out to my friends, really cool band from Milwaukee called Canyons of Static. This is from a 7-inch um, that they put out quite a few years ago, 10 years maybe? Um, I'll put a link to them in the description. Worthy of your attention, all the members are doing new um, projects that are also worthy of your attention. Uh, anyway, I just lifted this basically straight off of the record. I initially planned, since it was backwards guitar, I planned on sampling it and then reversing it so it would be forward guitar, I guess. But it actually worked better as just a, um, a backwards guitar. Uh, there's quite a bit of effect on it as well. I mean, it was recorded with a lot of effects and reversed. Uh, and then I added more, because that's what I do. So, then we also have the sample of um, Jack Webb talking about his favorite song. And I sampled it at both 45, which was the original speed, and at 33. Um, which just gives a different effect than trying to mess time stretch it in Ableton. Just analog time stretching with the speed control on the turntable. So you get this. Everybody has a favorite song. Everybody has a favorite song. Pitch down. Everybody has a favorite song. Mine is a tune called Somebody Loves Me. Everybody has a favorite song. Mine is a tune called Somebody Loves Me. I have no excuses to offer. So, those are pretty much all the elements. Um, I, don't, I didn't really do a lot of processing. Uh, there wasn't a lot of studio trickery in this one. That's that. That's the song. It's pretty simple. When you have good samples and you put them together in interesting ways, you don't need to uh, go crazy. Although going crazy is nice. We'll get back to that. Don't worry. All right. See you next time.